this thing. Going live here. Going to do some music streaming, music uh, production. I wish Studio would remember my past setup, but it does not. So I'm going to have to share a screen here. Give me a second. And we are going to share another camera so you could see my MIDI controller. Perfecto. All right, so why don't we do uh, something a little different? Well, first, <clears throat> I have some audio files, audio clips, and I want to get them from an external hard drive into my main computer here because I have samples from Vengeance. And back in the day, Vengeance was... Those were the samples to get if you were into electronic music. And they have some really good risers and up, uh, what do they call them? Uplifters, downlifters that I really can't find or haven't looked too hard. But I can't find in any of the, like, the stock sounds that Studio One or other software has. So I'm just going to bring these over into my hard drive. So I'm going to copy them into music. And I got samples. Oh, I already got them, man. I don't need them. That's good. So, I just got to tell Studio One where they are. But I don't want to use Studio One. I want to do something in Bitwig. Let's mess around with Bitwig Studio. This is just from a YouTube video I did. Let's go to Bitwig Studio. It's open up a new project and get started actually writing a song in Bitwig Studio. So, if you've never used Bitwig Studio before, it's very much like Ableton. Because I believe some of the developers from Ableton came over to Bitwig. And if you've never used music software before, it's going to seem very confusing and not inspiring, probably, this blank screen. But here's as easy as it can get. Go to the devices up here, because dev you want instruments. I always want instruments first. That's the device. Those are devices. And click on these yellow, that little piano thing. These are all the instruments that you can use to make sounds. Why don't we bring in FM4, which is a synthesizer, and just drop it anywhere blank in the black here. And let's play it and see if it's what it sounds like. Now, that's a pretty cool sound on its own. So let's add some reverb to it. You could add effects to an instrument by, well, one way to do it is just click on effects here. Click on the plus and then find the effect you want. Let's just chuck a reverb in there. And that just, that sounds pretty good just on its own. All right, let's record that. So the tempo is two, three, four. Do we have a tap tempo in? I don't know if we have tap tempo in Bitwig, so let's just hear how it sounds. Good. And so let's just hit the record button here in scene one. Let's pop open the clip by double clicking on it and looking what we did and getting rid of any errors we got. So, dun, 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 dun. There's an error. Let's play it and hear how it sounds. Cool. And let's get rid of these other two because we're not going to be using them. So right-click on them, delete. And let's go to the drum machine and bring in some drums that we're going to play into the song ourselves. Click the folder, open up a browser, and just click on some kits here. 
and see what we got going on. We want to do a live preview. Why is it not live previewing? Uh, we might have to actually program something in. Let's bear chat. Uh, must be big because my system's glitching out a tad here. Bear with me. Not a fan. Let's record something anyway, though. Cool. Let's open that up. And let's make the clip the length we want it to be, which is right there. And let's quantize it. Now, on Bitwig to quantize, I can't remember the shortcut, so if I right-click, where's quantize? Q. Good. I like when quantize is Q. So I'm just going to Q. It'll put everything on time. And let's hear how it sounds. Let's turn off the click track. We don't need it anymore. Let's find some other presets of drums. like this. Cool beans. Cool beans. I have a friend who hates when I say that. All right, so um, here's what we got so far. So let's put a bass in there. What could be a good bass? I think the polysynth has some cool bass stuff. Let's go to polysynth. And let's open the folder and see what we got under bases. So that's under category. Synth bass, and it's uh, all right. It's not bad. Let's use it. Let's hit Q, but let's make sure the clip is the right length, which it is not. We want it to only go to three. Just drag that guy like that, and let's play them all.
cool, cool. Now let's take this. Let's pop in another FM4. Let's take this clip, control drag. Does that copy it? Yeah, control drag copies it. And let's arpeggiate this guy with not a device now, not an audio effect, a note effect, arpeggiator. Pop that in. Let's solo this so we see what we got going on here and see what we got. Let's see what this is. And we want this arpeggiator to be before the instrument. And let's try some different sounds. This is cool. Isn't that a great sound? Let's add uh, some effects to it. Let's open up the mixer. There's already an effects. Oh, but there's no reverb in it. Let's, put, let's make reverb here. As an effects channel one. And then we can add it here. Hear them all at the same time. Add a little bit of an EQ on this guy here, which we can do right here. Let's go EQ five and let's tweak to our liking. save because I like what I got going on here and we'll call this new project for and let's put something else here maybe a chorus what's chorus plus how about a delay Johnny Fernandez from Kick. What's going on, Johnny? How can I help you? Johnny Fernandez, how can I help you, sir? Cool. 
cool. So I'm going to save that. And let's open a new project in Bitwig. How about Polymer? Let's see what's going on with that instrument. What is it going on? Uh oh, that's fine. That is thick.
Yeah, man, don't rush. Don't worry about it. Like, uh, I, I know you're busy there. Okay, thank you. Yeah. See ya. Thank <laughs> you. 